but the battle at the front takes a dramatic turn. Llewellyn's lead has gone, and so too is a fair bit of the Metro's bodywork. David, a flying start, and then problems. What happened? Yes, um, we got off to a nice start. We, we, we actually had about a 45-second lead, and on stage seven, it, uh, it all went a bit wrong. Um, the car got slightly out of line with me and uh, hit the gravel on the outside of the bend and half spun and we took off into a ditch at about 80 miles an hour and uh, I just closed my eyes and waited for it to stop. Quite a lot happened. Bill reckoned we went upside down but I'm not quite so sure whether we did or not. But uh, when we came to a stop we were facing the wrong way down the stage in a big ditch and had to drive about 100 yards down the ditch actually to get out and we'd uh, broken a wheel as well so we had to drive to the end of the stage then. Uh, on this wheel, just spokes really. Um, so we lost about a minute then. So uh, Jimmy's, I think, is about 20 or 30 seconds in the lead now. Fair bit of frantic activity going on here as a result. <laughs> and the gearbox change as well? Yes. Um, obviously, we knocked a lot of the bits off the car and uh, hasn't been handling too well since then. Uh, so the boys are as they can. Um, and the gearbox changes to give us lower gearing for the forestry stages uh, from now on. Yeah, we must have been very I was very pleased with the way it was going and uh, one very small, uh, I don't know what they call it, mistake or, or um, over-eagerness, um, let it all fly. But I mean, we're still in the race, so uh, hopefully w with it, uh, the boys doing a few measurements and sorting it out, that we'll be back on the pace again. Glad to see the back of Ed Pint and glad yes. to see the forest coming up. Sure. I, I told you I didn't like Ed Pint, didn't I? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't like it even worse now. <laughs> By dawn in the forests, Llewellyn's patched up car hit the front again. McRae, Mikola and Blomquist have been swapping the lead throughout the night. We appeared set for a tremendous climax as the man the Welsh insist is a world champion of the future tried to resist the challenge of two world champions of the past. Anu Mikola snatches the lead here in Dovey Forest. And Stig Blomquist, after his cautious start and puncture problems, has been fastest on seven stages up to the restart. Russell Brooks was struggling to hang on to fifth, the resurgent Mark Lovell closing on him all the time. Lovell's turbo problems were behind him. He'd recorded one fastest time in the night, no doubt spurred on by Roger Freeman, the new man in the passenger seat. How's the new partnership working out in the it's car? It's going very well, really, because it's under a lot of stress with being the first event and being especially a sprint event, Roger's getting, we're getting on quite well really. We've right. had our mishaps though. Like what? Oh, just not being used to the sort of language that he uses and stuff that I'm used to. Right. Now what's the task for the rest of the day? What do you think you can achieve in the last Go few as hours? as fast as we can. <laughs> With what sort of place in mind? Hopefully for next event. Look at that. Roger Freeman doing his job of providing the urgency in Lovell's challenge. No shortage of urgency in the battle for the lead as Mikola was challenged by a charging Llewellyn in the torrential rain of Glenafan. Llewellyn was an astonishing 21 seconds faster than Mikola on this four and a half mile stage and the forests and the valleys were already starting to celebrate. Those celebrations didn't last long. On the very next stage, Llewellyn misjudged a hairpin and launched the Metro off a 60-foot drop. The car dived down a bank into the trees. Llewellyn and co-driver Phil Short emerged comparatively unscathed. And once again, an amateur cameraman caught the final seconds of the horrifying plunge that spelt the end of all the Welsh hopes. Well, basically, we were going too quickly uh, on the approach to this corner. Um, it, it, the road was just a slight left-hander, and it was just going away from me all the time, and uh, I thought that I was well under control, and it just sort of tightened up at the last minute before coming into this hairpin. And as you can see, we, we've just come over the bank and hit this road and, and ended up down there in the trees. But uh, happily, that both Phil and I are OK, and the, the roll cage in the car you know, saved us very well. Set up pretty well. Actually landed on its roof, did it? Yes, the boys have actually just tipped it over to see whether they can drag it out from here to, to take it home. Yeah. In a box. <laughs> <laughs> it must have gone on forever, this accident, or seemed like it. What, what were your thoughts as you went over the edge there? Well, yes, it didn't actually go on that long. I mean, we were still on the wheels coming down across the, uh, across the bank there. 
Um, but I could see it was going to end up in a pretty uh, big accident. When we hit the, the road here, then it started going end over end. That's all I can remember was seeing the, the twigs of these trees, because uh, as you can see, the, the twigs have been broken up here. Um, and, uh, and then it just came to a, a sudden stop. Uh, the most frightening bit was being upside down and not being able to open the doors to get out and petrol actually dripping in the cab. Uh, that was quite frightening, but luckily there's spectators here and they, uh, they ripped the doors open and we got out. It left Stig Blomquist in the Ford RS200 challenging Mikola with Jimmy McRae third. But Blomquist's suspension is hopping around and Sweden's former world champion would retire with suspension failure on the very next stage. So Mikola kept a 20-second cushion between himself and McRae to take a record fourth Welsh international. The great man showing all his professionalism, starting the event just hours after the tragic news of the death of his close friend Henry Toivonen. At the finish, he talked of the sad loss of one of the sport's great stars. It was really terrible news, uh, and uh, you know I have I have known Henry from uh, when he was a kid. So you know I five years old, you know so I. It's very hard to believe it has happened. This time, I think he was the fastest driver around, you know, winning uh, RAC Monte Carlo, and everything was just open for him, and, uh, you know, it's a really terrible thing. It's been a sad start to the season all round with it's the story. Like really the debate is, is going on in the papers about exactly where the sport is going. What is your view about the power of the cars and the kind of events that we see them competing in? Yeah, it's a two, two problems, you know, the first one is the spectators and uh, we have been extremely lucky not to have any big problems and uh, accidents before. They have been really, you know, on the cards all the time and now it looks like uh, we are getting nearly every, on the every, every rally something and of course then uh, driver's point of view, cars are very, very fast now and uh, of course your reaction time is much uh, less what you, you used to have and every bend is uh, you know you have to break and uh, decide the speed so makes it much uh, much more difficult you know and uh, if i think uh, you know i have been driving maybe 20 already 23 years so, so we used to have a good race even 15 years ago what is the answer though do you think there is a crisis facing the sport at the moment when uh, rallying has become so important like it is now, pub publicity and all. Uh, all the factories, of course, are trying to do their best. And when the factories are putting money and uh, all the knowledge what they have got, it's just uh, one way to go, and that's forward. And uh, so you have to be very careful when you make the regulations, because normally people intend to go around those. So it has to be simple, re uh, simple regulation how to how to reduce the speed. Let's not get gloomy about the future because you've had a great win this weekend. Congratulations. Thank you.